Hey everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Press Enterprise High School Football Video Podcast. I'm sports editor Tim Heron. We're here with assistant editor Dan Riley and we're going to be talking about playoffs. Hey, yeah, how gonna, about that? We're going to be talking some playoffs. So, um, first of all, we'll talk about a subject that you probably know the most about, uh, Danville. I do know a lot about Danville this you year. You do know a lot about Danville. Um, they're dealing with a lot of injuries, they are. but they're, uh, they're on a winning streak here. Uh, they have to go up to Athens. Mm-hmm. Uh, can they win this game? Five in a row? Yeah, I, I, believe, I believe they can win this game solely because, you know, we, we've talked about it before where we don't really know what we're getting into when we see Northern <laughs> Tier teams. But uh, they handled Wyalusing when Wyalusing came down to uh, see them around week five, something like that. Um, I think Athens, I, I just don't know not enough about Athens until I see them. Um, but at the same time, I feel like Danville's defense is A, played very well, B, they're creating a lot of opportunities uh, to put... Yeah, it's a crazy amount of turnovers. Yeah, to put themselves in, in position to... Uh, to give the offense a chance. So, uh, yeah, I feel like if they get a couple turnovers like they have each of these uh, each of these games they've won since their losing streak, you know, they've won five in a row now. They've created a lot of turnovers. And I feel like uh, they have enough on offense, even being dinged up right now, I feel like uh, they can, can possibly get the job done up there. Now, uh, Southern Columbia... Fourth straight ten and zero season, mm-hmm. and have you seen anything from them that leads you to believe that they? Because we both said we thought they they win the district yeah. a couple weeks ago. Have you seen anything in the, the since then that leads you to believe that that still isn't the case? Uh, yeah, I think that's. I think they still win the the district. You know, they they had that tough game with Sealand's Grove last week. Sure, uh, showed that they can go. You know, four quarters with their their starters and and find themselves in you know tough. Tough situations where it's a close game. Um, yeah. Now they, 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 they've thrown six interceptions the past two weeks. Yeah, that's how big a concern is that? I think that's a bit. It's probably a big concern. I'm sure Coach Roth would would uh, like to clean that up. But you know, how much of that is uh, what other teams are seeing on film? So, I mean, if they can correct that. You so know, it, could, it could just be situational. It, it could be situational. Um, I don't know, obviously, because I haven't been to those games, but. I, I still feel like they they have they're balanced enough that they can uh, beat you in all three facets of the game. Yeah, they they, they have more talent than anybody. Yeah, they, they're just loaded. Yes, they are. Um, George Curry's final year yep. in Berwick. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the number two seed. They get a home playoff game. At yep. least one. They could get a second if Dallas beats Prep. Mm-hmm. Do you think Berwick has enough to win the district? <sighs> no. Because, and I say that because offensively. Defensively? Yeah, a lot, a lot of question marks on offense. Yeah. They've got a lot of good running backs. Yeah, absolutely. And they, just, it, uh, You look at the passing numbers. Yep, they're balanced uh, there in, in the backfield, but the, the passing numbers are not overwhelming by any means. They only have four touchdowns through the air. Yeah, the lowest uh, passing yardage by far in the area. Yep. Uh, which is, how often can you say that about a Berwick team? Right. I mean... Uh, the defense, obviously, to their credit, is playing very well. They've only the, the highest number of points they've given up is against Valley West. You well, yeah, four shutouts. Yeah, uh, and if it hadn't been for uh, you know Coughlin scoring six, they'd have three yeah. shutouts in a row here. Yeah. So I, I I like we had talked about this earlier. You know, if Dallas ends up beating Scranton Prep, um, that's and, a winnable game. Sure, but Dallas. Still held Berwick to seven points. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's that says a lot about what Dallas has, too. And I think it says a little about the Berwick's inability to score. Yes, yeah. I agree. Now, let me ask you this. Um, Eastern Conference had uh, just a heck of a time this week oh, filling man. out a four-team field in Class A. Did they ever? You know, Bloom was kind of sweating. Were they going to get in? Were they not going to get in? How, how important was that central win going to be? And mm-hmm. it ultimately kind of ended up being insignificant because it seems like they could have lost that game and still made the field. Eastern Conference, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bucktail dropped out. Yep. Uh, Line Mountain dropped out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know, so what we're left with is uh, what we're left with is a three-team field yep. where Schuylkill Haven's going to get a bye. Yep. Do you agree with this policy? Because the, the, the reason the, the schools like the Bucktails and the Sayers dropped out was the, the district has a policy that if you're under 500, you don't get to go to the playoffs. Do, do you agree with that? I agree with that policy. Um, but at, at the same time, I feel like there's got to be a little give and take there. Because I, I like the idea that, that teams can have 
a chance to play another week. See, I, I disagree. Uh, you know, if you're a field hockey team and you go, uh, you, you know, whatever. Yeah, eight and ten, nine and eleven. You, you know, you don't have you know the the high school version of the NIT to get an extra game. That's true. And I understand football is more important. It makes money. It does. You know, you you like to get those extra games. It does. But yeah, but it's. I, I don't think a sub five hundred team. You're right. You don't. No offense to Bloomsburg or to to Halifax mm-hmm. or you know any of these teams that that made Eastern Conference. Sure. But I, I just don't think like I, in high school I was on a sub five hundred team that went to the Eastern Conference. I don't think we should have been there. Probably not. And it's it's not like you see you know Eastern Conference playoffs for field hockey or yeah. soccer. It, it, it's it, it's all one. It's districts or nothing. So, yeah, I, I absolutely understand that point of view, but uh, I don't know if Eastern Conference is the right way to go. I mean, but how can you? I mean, there's there's eight teams in District Four Class AA playoffs. Um, and you look at other districts. I mean, there's. Four right. to eight. You, know, you, you look to... at a Mount Carmel who's six and four. Yeah, you can make the case that they deserve. And I think the Eastern Conference, you know, they serve a purpose, mm-hmm. but not for a team that's three and seven like Line Mountain mm-hmm. was. Yeah, I, I guess necessarily that's you know not not as a, a, a crucial for for teams to get in and and play an Eastern Conference game when you're really just playing for pride at that point. Yeah. What are you getting me for Christmas? Depends. What do you want? Have you been good this year? Well, that's all we have this year, uh, this week on the podcast. But if you liked what you saw, uh, please keep watching, and we'll have another one next week. And if you'd like to read uh, any of our stories or check out our weekly playbook, the last one is this week, uh, you can go to PressEnterpriseOnline.com, and uh, everything will be there, our tweets from the game. So go check that out. A lot of good stuff. I've been very good this year. I am Press Enterprise Sports Editor Tim Hare, and we will see you next week. <laughs>